Do you bleed green? Are you an ultimate Eagles football fan? Well, you're in the right place. Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> Red, break! This is Birds 365, hosted by the new Mac and Mac, Jody McDonald and John McMullen. Here we go, here we go! Who collectively have covered and talked about more than 50 plus years of Eagles football. Kick off your day with Birds 365. You'll get debate. We love to argue. You'll get the real story from inside the locker room. And you'll hear from some of the great football minds from around the region. You're about to become an Eagles insider. Get in the game. Join Jody Mack and Johnny Mack. And join the football community that flocks to Birds 365. Birds 365 starts right now. Welcome to the NFL. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. E A G L E S Eagles. And a good morning, Birds fans. Thanks for being here on Birds 365 with the Mac and Mac guys. John McMullen, Jody McDonald. A day without Birds 365, like a day without sunshine. Yes, I was completely lost. I uh, called in for a little WIP duty, so uh, you're truly not here yesterday. Sure, I missed out on a great show. I know I missed out on Grant Paulson. So I yeah, Grant was great. We had a lot of good. I I don't you know. I hope the fans enjoy when we talk about the other teams in the division. Now, I I find Washington completely intriguing I, yes. I i i think it's such an interesting team hopefully other people find it that way as well but yeah grant grant is great and he and he was great uh yeah. 19 free agents they've signed by the oh, way oh yeah that's yeah. why i suggested to you i said hey you know we should do the divisional thing this week uh because uh other than the cowboys and we got my show up here just to ask him about it back on monday when are the Cowboys ever going to jump into the free agency pool? Not anytime soon. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about the, the commanders because I think they're the most improved team in the National Football League. Now, they had more room to improve than anybody else. They had more salary cap flexibility. So it wasn't like this was a shocking development. But I actually think they've done a job of upgrading their team and their talent. And the only text I said, text the grant to tell them, yeah, I'm sorry. I asked you to come on the show, and then I'm not on the show. I said, who are they going to take with the number two pick? Is it going to be Daniels or is it going to be May? And he said, they're being coy about it. He's a Daniel. He's a May guy. I'm a May guy. But he said, yeah. he really can't. I'm, I'm a Jaden Daniel. I think that we talked about that, and he said the same thing. They're being coy about it. Um, I think they're going to go Jaden Daniels. I think they want the playmaker, you know, the new school type quarterback. Um, but, yeah, I mean. Drake May would hardly be a, a bad choice. Um, but I, I get the feeling that they're leaning towards Jaden Daniels, but they got to get that right, whichever it is. I mean, they, they, you know, for all the improvements they've made, and I agree with you, they've made a ton of improvements. Um, we talked about Frankie Lubu. We talked about linebacker here. Bobby Wagner's older, but still playing at a high level. I'm surprised they were able to get Bobby Wagner. We talked about him as well, because I think he would have been a great fit for the Eagles if they think they're a Super Bowl contender. He's still playing at a high level. Granted, it's a short-term fix, but you could have worse short-term fixes. And Washington, in theory, isn't a Super Bowl contender. And I'm surprised that Bobby didn't go ring shopping, but you know, he's got a history yeah, with Dan Quinn. Quinn. He's got a history yeah. with Ken I think Norton. I'm very comfortable um, with Quinn. Yeah. So um but I thought he would he would have been a great short-term fix for the Eagles, and he's in the division because uh, he can still play. Um, yeah, very interesting team. But they yeah. got to get the quarterback right. Right, got and, and that's what it's all going to come down to. And uh, we still got several weeks before we get to the draft and the lead-up to it and all that stuff. So sorry I missed yesterday's show, everybody. Uh, I know Johnny and uh, uh, my guy uh, – Grant Paulson gave you all the commander insight. I missed out on all the Eagle insight, and I missed yesterday signing Tyler Hall, defensive back, formerly of the Raiders, 
That's one position that people would say, when are they ever going to get a cornerback? They still need an upgrade. I was on WIP yesterday. I couldn't believe my uh, buddy Jody <laughs> Cameron saying, can't believe that uh, Brad Berry's still on the team. They get Brad Bradbury's replacement yesterday in Tyler Hall, Johnny Mac. No, what they did get is a pure slot cornerback. He's a, he's a slot guy. So you know, it's funny. I wrote earlier in the day for SI um, that they still need a couple positions to draft proof their roster, so to speak. Third receiver. Um, I mentioned uh, swing tackle on the offensive line, um, and nickel corner. They need. You could talk about Isaiah Rogers, and we did earlier this week, but until he actually gets reinstated, and remember, he doesn't have history playing the position, even though he looks like a nickel corner from a physical standpoint and might project there better than the outside. And Zach McPherson as well, but he's coming off a torn Achilles. So, and I've talked to Zach a couple of times. I think he's going to be fine for off-season work uh, at least some at some point but remember he he injured himself in the preseason so it was august um and that's a significant injury so they needed something and somebody and they they brought in this kid who's got some experience with the raiders uh started six games i believe tyler hall five eight five nine hundred and eighty pound guy uh three hundred of his Basically, 400 reps have been in the slot. So, to me, this is the draft proofing of the slot. You finally get a body who who understands. Now, they they played Bradbury in the slot. We know how that went. They played Eli Ricks in the slot. We know how that went. You don't put six foot two guys in the slot. Sidney Brown, he's not six two, but he's not a slot corner either. Yeah, he's coming off a torn ACL as well. So, in week 18. So, that's even... From a timing standpoint, Sydney's not going to have an offseason, basically. Sydney should never be in the slot again, as far as I'm concerned. He's a safety. Leave him at safety. That's well, uh, uh, if, you, safety. If, if you got some packages, I have no problem if you're playing big nickel and you got a different package. But not consistent nickel corner. It, you know, if he's essentially a deep back to linebacker, a lot of people use that package. Um and if Vic wants to roll that out occasionally, I have no problem with it. But certainly not for the whole game. It wouldn't make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so they needed a natural slot corner. Avante Maddox is still out there, by the way. And the longer he stays out there, you know, why not bring him back on a one-year? Um, can they get him at the veteran minimum? You know, what's going on with Avante Maddox? Maybe other people are concerned about his health long term so that's something to keep an eye on but um yeah they needed they needed a body and they brought one in and tyler hall is your newest eagle pj mustafer we probably didn't talk about him either uh defensive tackle big defensive tackle so they're getting to the draft proofing portion of the offseason who was the guy and shame my man i can't remember the name street um Contavious Street. Tried, Contavious Street, and they ended up losing him in a roster shuffle, and he went somewhere. Is is the DT they signed along the signs of Contavious Street that he's a body, he's going to be on the, the, a roster decision week out, week, week in, week out? Is he part of the inactives? Is that the level of talent they uh, got with him? Uh, no, I, I think not even. Not, no. Contavious is was is he signed with a re-signed with atlanta um it, it is an nfl player i mean he's played in the league for six seven years uh he's had some success they actually traded him uh for i forget i i, I have to look it up what the but you know they got something for him trading him here, here we go. Contava Street, along with a 2025 seventh round pick, traded to Atlanta for a 2024 sixth round pick. So they got a little bit of draft uh, movement position. In right. Yeah. Um, so they got a little bit for him. He's a legitimate NFL player. He re signed with Atlanta and he'll probably make the team again. PJ Mustafer's uh, more of a um, uh, young player. Uh, he was. You know, he's Penn State guy, uh, undrafted uh, by Denver, I believe, uh, 
last year. So, I mean, he's very inexperienced. And then New Orleans plucked him off Denver's practice squad, and he got a little bit of time there, 30, 40 reps. But he's very young. Um, his brother, you might recognize, is Sam Mustafer, who's a, a pretty good center. Um, um, so, you know, Penn State guy, big, 320-ish, so would probably project more as a, a run stopper, I would think, and that's something they need. They don't have a lot of that. They got a lot of three techniques, a lot of guys who can get the passer from the interior. Uh, but other than Jordan Davis, a little bit of Marlon T. Um, so I was going to ask about Marlon T. We never bring up Marlon T. It doesn't come up in the conversation. I think you've told me on many an occasion the Eagles like Marlon T. And he did. He played for them last year. How does he factor? I know we got the draft to go and – uh, this kid you're talking about that they just signed is Marlon T a guy who's going to be on this team next year and contributing. Yeah. I mean, it depending on what they get in the draft, if they get anything and that's one mm -hmm. position that's probably not going to be at the top of the board because they are comfortable with Carter and Davis and Milton Williams and, and Marlon T and, and, and Brandon Graham can move inside. We've talked about that. Don't forget Moro Ajomo. They like him from right. last Oh year. shoot. I forgot all about Moro. Shame on me. Yeah, they got a they got a lot of lot of bodies at defensive tackle, but most of them, uh, as I said, are are more, you know, three technique types who can got great movement skills. Carter, obviously most notable, but uh, that would describe Milton. You know, that would describe Brandon when he moves into the uh, side. That would de describe Moro Ajomo. And really, the only two run stoppers are Jordan Davis and Marlin. Um, and and Marlin's kind of undersized. I mean, it's funny to call a 305-pound guy undersized. Undersized, but right. When you're talking about <laughs> NFL run stoppers, that's a little bit undersized. Uh, Mustafer's a little bit bigger. So who knows? You know, you roll the dice. And um, his, his, his brother... Um, played center at Notre Dame, if you remember him, and he's been a starter in a couple different places. Sam Mustafer, um, not great, but, you know, long-term, you know, he's, let's see, started 42 games in the NFL, so that's not bad. Chicago since, and Baltimore. Since you went to brother combo, uh, I got to just comment on this because yesterday they brought it up on WIP. And I just honestly said, I don't care. Um, they made a big deal about Dak's brother on a podcast. Oh, yeah. He was uh, Tad. He called Jalen Hurts uh, a running back. A running back. Yeah. They asked him to list the top 10 quarterbacks in the league. He put Mahomes one, put his brother two. And he went down a list and he hadn't gotten a Jalen and whoever's podcast it was said, Jalen Hurts, he said, you're talking about quarterbacks, not running backs, right? So, yeah, it was disrespectful. It was taking yeah, how much you? Who cares? Yeah, who 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 the hell is? What he's, is his name? Tad he's Prescott. Tad Prescott. Yeah. Who the hell is Tad Prescott? I, I because he said it on a podcast. There aren't enough podcasts out there these days. I, what do I say, Jody? I say turn the page. Go to the next podcast. Go to the next uh, list. Go to the next power ranking i would say if you don't like one go to the next you know but, obviously tad is trying to uh i assume i didn't listen to the whole thing i assume buoy his brother and the dallas cowboys so he's taking a shot at the eagles wow all right shocking <laughs> okay. shocking yeah. that something like that would happen and i get it like you said there's always another one you can listen to and from time to time hey i'm guilty of it play the disrespect card when I think it's actual true disrespect, when someone that can actually do something about it on a field, uh, as a coach or a player, they disrespect. Yeah, you want to uh, dip into that and use it as a little self-motivation? Sure, that's fine. The quarterback's brother, we're now hanging our hat at, oh, Jalen's going to have a chip on his shoulder because Tad Prescott called him a running back. Come on. We are too yeah. quick to play the whole we're disrespected card. 
it just makes me laugh out loud. But uh, that's why I'm sorry if Mustafa. What's the Tad? Name? Yeah, Tad Prescott. By the way, speaking of podcast, uh, Shady McCoy and Deshaun Jackson are starting their own podcast. I believe today, the Twenty Five Ten podcast. So. If you're an Eagles fan and want to hear some good Eagles stuff, uh, unless it involves Chip Kelly, go find uh, Shady and uh, Deshaun's podcast. Uh, yeah. Good, good on them. But again, I, I, th this is just me. Um, I kind of like if we're looking for disrespect material, it's got to be someone who can actually cause disrespect. Tad and Prescott. Tad, Tad's not quite cut. Sounds like today. a made up. Name by the way, Tad Prescott. They, they were making fun of his name pretty good too. I, I I didn't join in, but I did agree. Tad Tad should be wearing a sweater tied across his shoulders and hanging out with Biff. Tad and Biff should be hanging out together. Tad shouldn't be commenting on NFL quarterbacks. All right, he's McMullen. I'm McDonald. Mac and Mac Birds 365. We got our man, the man, the myth, the legend. Been doing it for a while, like a couple of decades. Uh, long time Eagle. Beat reporter now eagle columnist on his own website les bowen john.com les bowen up with us first guests coming up here on birds 365 Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker, Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was gonna be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was gonna be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was gonna be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA. And the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Mac and Mac here on Birds 365 on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Thank you for streaming in. I, I'm asking you. I'm begging you. Hit that like button. Why wouldn't you hit the like? Les Bowen is joining us. Of course you have to hit that like button. 
Les is great, by the way. Can I say, Les, you gave me a laugh out loud moment yesterday. Someone had put, and I don't want to out them, but someone had put Come on, one Adam. of the, uh, Come I, I don't, on, well, I don't even know who it was, to be honest. So I'd have to look it me up. Neither. Maybe less than, yeah. yeah. Uh, talking about a young player who is a literal chess piece on the field. <laughs> and Les, being the old school great writer that he is, points out to the, young, you know, if you're a literal, literal chess piece, it's probably going to be pretty difficult to uh, to play a professional football. But, yeah, give me a laugh out loud moment. Editing might not be what it once was, but, yeah, you're going to get called out on that young writer. So, And the thing that's fascinating literal. about social media, yeah. John, is so a lot of people thought that was funny. There was <laughs> one guy who was outraged. It wasn't the guy that wrote the piece. Outraged, yeah. Some guy wrote me a long screed about how his generation has redefined this word and that (laughs) its slang meaning is very different from what we old people think it means. So therefore I am an idiot and Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's always one. There's always one. I believe you cannot redefine words on your own. I believe. I I think it's a, it's a arduous process. You can try. And uh, I'd love to ask that. My wife tries, by the way, on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, Incorrectly uses literal. Good. Good to know. (laughs) Um, And uh, I would love to ask that person who called you on the carpet last glass. Can literal chess pieces make hip drop tackles? Because, Yes. I think that would be very difficult. Yeah, it would be hard for them. That, yeah. The the knight maybe bishop never queen wouldn't bother. Maybe the knight could make a hip hip drop tackle. Um, we had you on uh, last just last week, early last week when free agency was just getting underway. Mm-hmm. So many moves have been made since across the league. We say eagle centric and the like. The overall haul, what the Eagles have gained, what the Eagles have lost. If you're putting a grade on Howie Roseman from A plus to F, and we're admitting this is a fluid grade because there are moves yet to be made. We didn't even get to the draft yet. But on this date, as we sit here on the Thursday after the Monday start of NFL free agency, 10, 11 days later, what would you say Howie grades out at right about now? I'm kind of about a B, I guess. I haven't seen... You know, the, the Barkley thing is a big deal, and a few of the other, the the Huff thing is a big deal, and some of the other lower-profile signings are, are very – they keep signing guys. They signed a new slot corner last night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't know a thing about him, but, uh, you know, it's uh, – yeah, it, they're filling gaps, and it's taking care of business. I'm not uh, – I don't see that they've – totally fixed everything that they had to fix. And the Hassan Reddick situation concerns me, uh, you know, so I, you know, B, B is about as high as I want to go right now. Great minds think alike. I think I gave the Eagles a B and mm-hmm. I like Jody. Jody has an exercise and I like this less. If you have to, if you say B, but you have to go up or down. So you got to go to a B minus or a B plus. Would you lean towards going up or down? Because I would lean going down. Me too. Yeah. yeah, I would lean yeah. going down. I just be minus. Yeah. I haven't seen a difference making signing at any at, at linebacker or safety really. I mean, CJ Gardner Johnson. Yeah, it's good to have him back, but you know, it. I would have rather had, you know. The, the Giants guy, Xavier McKinney, I would have rather, yep. you know, the linebacker, I would have rather had like a Patrick Queen type uh, linebacker. Um, yeah, you know, I, I am starting to warm up. This will probably yeah. surprise Jody a little bit after getting to meet Devin White. I am starting to warm up on that and saying, well, maybe that's worth a, a swing. It's a lottery ticket. Don't get me wrong. Right. Um, it's you not know, Patrick I, Queen. I love Devin White's talent. I just, yeah. maybe it's coaching, but the, the thing that happened was he was in a really good defense and, yeah. and they felt he never yeah. developed, that he was the same, that he came out as a really aggressive guy right out of college who didn't really know what he was doing, but was all over the place and, and had a nose for the ball and stuff. And four years later, he was the same guy. He hadn't 
developed any real nuance or you know any uh, well there's plenty of red flags don't get me wrong yeah. And anytime you're the number five pick in the draft and you get second contract and you get $4 million, essentially, right. they run it as seven and a half, but those are all incentives. That's not a good sign. However, I will say we'll probably learn down when we get to talk to Howie a little bit behind the scenes. They probably were in on other linebackers, didn't get them. Uh, and at this stage, um, why not take a shot on the talent and maybe Vic Fangio can fix him and, yeah. and get him up to speed sure. from that standpoint. He, he does seem like a very smart kid. Um, one, one issue though, he's always worn the green dot, which I didn't know. I no, assume Levante David had, had to, cause he's the veteran. No, mm -hmm. he had the green dot from day one. Nicobe Dean has a green dot here. So yeah. we'll have to see how that, uh, uh, kind of works out yeah um it, it is a concern but i like it a little bit more after he spoke he seems like a bright kid he he was injured last year injured his foot ironically against the eagles in week three and he played through it i like that um but yeah the film is not great i'm trying to look for positives it's rare i do that less Here, here's um, the reason why i'm not buying john if you're going to give me Bryce Huff is an ascending player that you oh, shut out the, 17 You million really per. don't like that guy, do you, Jay? Well, no, I'm <laughs> I'm making a comp between two Eagle signings. Yeah. If you're spending like just below top door money for that position mm -hmm. on a guy who's had one really good season, you're betting on progression. You're betting on upside. You're betting right. on what right. way he's trending. Okay, if you're going to put money on trending up, how do you justify trending down? Because that's all Devin White has done his entire career. He's gotten worse every single year for five years in Tampa. Fangio's just going to come in and wave a magic wand and, and get him back to that fifth overall draft pick in the class of uh, uh, 2019. He, is, he is a defensive savior, Vic Fangio. Yeah. Evidently. And they're not paying much money for this. You know, and yeah. I don't think they're pinning their whole – defensive strategy on uh, the development of Devin White. But, you know, I, there is a point there, Jody, that you, yeah, it's a good point. A lot of these signings are kind of like, well, this could work out. You know, I mean, it's not slam dunk. Uh, but I'm not – free agency has never been – I still bear the, the scars of 2011. <laughs> free agency – winning free agency has never been something that gets me too excited. No, um, you can every now and then you you get a you know Malcolm Jenkins uh, here and there, but Brandon most Brooks, of the time it's yeah. it's fool's gold. You know you're it's it's I don't I don't try to you know, the teams that make the biggest splashes in free agency are very rarely the teams you see in free in the Super Bowl the next year. You know, um, so yeah. we'll see. You know they're they're plugging along. They've done some good things. Uh, the Barkley thing, which I'm still not as excited about that as as the fan base is. I think there's a lot of you know tweaking the Giants, uh, you know the the idea of that, the, the whole thing about his daughter saying, uh, you know, does this mean we're going to win now? <laughs> you know, I think the fans just love that kind of stuff. His, his daughter, crazy. yeah, his daughter yeah. is the star already. She's yeah. very cute. For those who don't know, the Eagles released a video of uh, Saquon Barkley's first uh, 24 hours with the team. Uh, and it was very interesting and because we don't get to see uh, as much as we used to inside the Novacare Complex right. list. So um, they, they showed us a quick glimpse of Howie Roseman's office. And uh, there was a, a, a quote on the wall. And the quote was, and I give Zach credit. Zach is very attentive as well. And Zach's the most attentive uh, person, Zach Berman, mm -hmm. on the beat. So the quote was, producing talented players year in and year out is not a luxury. It's a necessity. Um, now, Zach did the extra legwork. He found out that is a quote from Theo Epstein. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, the great uh, baseball GM who, who, think about him, you know. He, he stopped two curses. Um, yeah. So 
you know, uh, he's done one heck of a job. And, and, and that was a quote from him. Now, a couple things. I found it ironic that this is a bark. Now, you know, it's, this is a, they're showing Barkley and showing this quote. They're not producing Saquon Barkley. They're not producing Bryce Huff. They're not producing CJ Gardner Johnson. Your point to free agency. These are all talented players. But to get to Howie's quote that he's got up there, are they producing talented players year in and year out enough with their younger guys? Do you think they're doing that at this point, Les? Well, certainly not. I mean, uh, well, a lot depends on what we see from people like Jordan Davis and and Jalen Carter uh, this year. But uh, it's they had a huge problem there right around the, the time of the Super Bowl. They they had some drafts that really, you know, didn't move the needle very much. Uh, you know, everybody knows they drafted Jalen Rager <laughs> uh, over Justin Jefferson. You know, they've they've made some very good. You know, they've got the the they got. Myelata in the seventh round, but in the higher rounds, they don't tend to do nearly as well. Um, and they've had high picks these last several years too. Um, you know, it's it, certainly they have not been uh, the best drafting team in the NFL over this period. They've had a lot of different personnel people. You know, Andy Weidel is back in Pittsburgh now. Joe Douglas is the GM of the Jets. Uh, you know, they've been they, – they haven't had a lot of stability in the personnel operation. And, uh, you know, if they get praised every year at draft time. When the draft is over, it's like, oh, yeah, look, they got so-and-so. This What a genius thing. This was. Well, last year, Nolan Smith, I think – in yeah. fact, I got a quote. It's like, are you kidding me? I got a quote on draft night. It was actually the next day from a personnel executive because they got Carter and Nolan Smith and everybody around the league is like, and Carter, don't get me wrong. I mean, he showed tremendous upside and it was disappointing that he faltered a little bit down the stretch, but I think everybody sees the talent. Nolan Smith, we didn't see much of anything. No. Yeah. He looked like Marcus Smith. (laughs) I mean, I, I, it, Uh, it, Now that's that an needs, he needs about 20 pounds of muscle, you know, yeah. uh, it, the idea that uh, I think I said this on this, I don't repeat myself too much, but the idea that every undersized pass rusher is, uh, is Hassan Reddick. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Is like in the late eighties when I used to follow the NBA pretty closely and every fat forward coming undersized forward coming out of college was Charles Bar Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> no it doesn't work that way. And here's where I'll buy what both you guys are saying to a point. But even it goes to a point, and then to me it drops off. Like if the Eagles sign an undrafted guy or they pick up a free agent and he's here for a couple of years and he comes and goes and we just dis- – we moved on from him. But God forbid we move on from a fifth-round draft pick because, ooh, we actually used the draft – if you've been with the team three years, your draft status goes out the window for me. It doesn't matter anymore. You had three years to get out of them what you had to get out of them. Either you did or you didn't. It doesn't matter whether you draft them, drafted them or signed them as an undrafted free agent or claimed them off another team as a free agent. If you got now, there are guys yeah. that go in and out one year. That's all their bodies and stuff like that. If you spend more than one year, you spend two years with the team. You're an eagle. And we yeah. evaluate you on whether you were a good eagle or a bad eagle, whether it was a smart move by Howie to pick you up or not. I, I just get tired of people going, oh, he was a draft pick. Oh, he wasn't a draft pick. When you've been there two years, you're an eagle. And you should be evaluated yeah. that way, not by how you were acquired. Well, certainly you get evaluated that way when it comes to playing time. I don't agree with, you know, you have to play a guy because he was a high draft pick or anything like that. But if you have a, a high draft pick, you want to retain You know, you want to get the most out of those cheap years that you have and maybe get to a second contract, you know, with a guy that, you know, very much with much more depth than, you know, somebody coming to you from somewhere else. Uh, You know, your high picks, you want to you want them to be be bulwarks of your franchise. You know, you don't want just a a year or two or three out of a a first round pick. You want that guy to be here six years from now and be a building block of your team. 
Uh, and to be fair to the Eagles, have done it anyway, uh, mostly. To uh, Jody's point, and I I agree with Jody's point, but the Eagles are far from the only team that acts like that. I mean, yeah, it, that everybody we're we're just talking about Devin White. If Devin White was a fifth round pick, do you think he gets chance after chance after chance after chance in Tampa Bay? No, he got yeah. chance after chance because he's the number five overall pick, and they don't want to yeah. admit the mistake. Um, by a GM who won the Super Bowl yeah. and, you know, is very well regarded and used to work in NovaCare, by the way. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. NovaCare turnover. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, fifth overall pick, uh, that's a little bit of egg on their face, frankly, uh, yeah. that, uh, that he turned out the way he did. But, uh, you know, things, guys move around and things change. I think that's the best thing and you can if, say about if, Devin if, White. If, if you talk to the, you know, again, because it's such a good example, TJ Edwards, who the Eagles yeah. bind, um, uh, is an undrafted kid, not bind because he was a great college player. He was yeah. second uh, for the Budkiss Award, but he ran, a, I believe, a 4 8 7, and that was it. And as far yeah. as the NFL said, all right, we can't draft this kid. Film, throw the film out. He can't run. I, I always say, getting to know TJ over the years, a he remade his body, so that's probably the only team that, the only day in his life he ran a four eight seven. He probably had a bad day. People, you know, yeah. we, we all have bad days. We wake up, we're not at our best, and he probably had a bad day. Um, and they held it against him, but he slowly developed into a really good player, and he was mm-hmm. really good here at the end, and he was really good in Chicago last year, as opposed undrafted kid as opposed to Devin White who had one run towards the Super Bowl and basically performed poorly um, every other time but the league as a whole I mean that's why that's where like it's not just fans it's not just media the league looks at pedigree and and values it and oh athleticism you know I mean if you if you Devin White's a great athlete, you know, and he, 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 nobody, when, when Tampa drafted him fifth overall, nobody said, Oh, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. You know, uh, you know he's kind of Tampa's Derek Barnett, you know, <laughs> Derek Barnett had a good rookie year and was in the Super Bowl and made a, made a play in the Super Bowl. But, you know, after that, not as much. And yeah. my point is, and if John's heard me say this once, he's heard me say it a hundred times. I agree with pedigree to a point. Yeah. And then pedigree has got to go out the window. Like I just finished two uh, years. If you've been somewhere two years, your pedigree goes out the window. What you've actually done on the football field for a two-year period should well outweigh where you were picked or how you were obtained yeah. or what they gave up to get you. Tell me what the guy did on the field, and I'll tell you where he's at in his career rather than, yeah, yeah but true. he was an yeah. X-round draft pick. At some point, pedigree's got to stop. Sure. You're looking at, I, the only thing I'd say is you're right, but you're looking at, okay, here's a guy who's an elite athlete, maybe in a different situation. We, we can still make use of that, you know, uh, but we'll see. All right. Let's talk hip drop tackles less yes. hip drop. Everybody hates this. I, you know, uh, yeah. they start it and they're going to pass it. I mean, there's no question. The league wants, they might hold off to May if the coaches yeah. complain enough down at the owners meeting next week, but uh, it's going to pass. And I saw Slay was out there on social yeah. media immediately. Rodney McLeod, our old buddy, was out there. The Kobe Dean, the NFL PA said, what are you doing? What, what is this? Um, Why? Why is the league so intent on on doing stuff like this? Which is, and Jody and I were talking about it. I don't know if you heard in the green room less, but this is going to make the officials' job even harder. Oh yeah, and that, everybody's going to complain. Yeah. and it, it, why, see, that's my why? biggest. That's my biggest thing here. I don't. I understand that this causes some injuries, and you know it's not ideal, but. My problem, the reason the game is so poorly officiated now is that they've made things so complicated and so nuanced and so... Over-legislated. Yeah. Over-legislated. The the officials are overwhelmed with stuff they've got to look at. You know, 
adding this in there is just going to be, I, you can't in, in real time discern this easily. Uh, it's, I, I don't understand why, if I were the league and I were worried about this, I would get players and agents together and talk about, you know, okay, here's a situation where this happened. What could have been done differently? And if the players say, you know, it's bad, but there's, you can't, there's no way to, to get around it really. I would give up. I don't yeah. know who with the league has decided that this is, you know, a front page issue. It's they not made a it a front page it issue. It doesn't I cause didn't, Les, I didn't even know what a hit drop tackle was when they started talking about it and labeling Me it. neither. Me neither. Yeah. And how long have we been covering this stinking yeah. game? I didn't even know what they were talking about. They made it up. Well, there's been so many, so much legislation against other kinds of tackles that I think you're seeing it more than maybe you used to see it. Well, Mark uh, Andrews got hurt. Yeah. Yeah. You um, can't dive at a guy's knees and you can't smack him in the head anymore. You know, uh, I, but at some point, there's things that you just can't change that are bad. You know, I mean, that's, that's the thing that the NFL yeah, grapples so, with constantly about football. It's, it's a physical sport where people yeah. are going to get injured. I right. think we can all stipulate along the that. lines that you're talking I think the about players like, stipulate to that creating the name of hip drop tackle. Yeah. I, I guys used to get be pulled down by the back of their Jersey and yeah. then it became a horse collar tackle. Right. And I understood what it meant by horse collar tackle, but I'd never thought that somebody just came up with that name at one point. They well, go, you know, hey, it, we can penalize first, them for this. Terrell Owens. That was the, uh, the injury that uh, that was the first time I heard it called that. And that was, it took a long time, but that was the injury that started us down the path to, to getting that outlawed. You know, everybody remembers that, uh, uh, T.O. in Philadelphia. Uh, and, and it sounds like you and I and John all agree. Here's the problem with it. It's going to be completely subjective. It's not like at, at least the horse collar tackle, you can see. You yeah. get your hand in behind either right. the jersey or the shoulder pad, you pull it out, boom. He did it. Whether it should or shouldn't be a penalty, we should we can all argue right. about that. But we don't argue, is it actually a horse collar tackle? We can see and know what a horse collar tackle is. I'm not going to be able to judge on the fly, full speed, did he get his hips down ahead of time, pulled the guy to the ground. It's going to be a completely subjective right. call. And the referee who throws the flag on that is going to be so second-guessed. There's going to be booing in the right. stands. There's going to be announcers going, that's a bad call. The NFL, which tries to protect its referees as best they can, at least verbally, then put something like this in to just make their job that much more difficult and make the spotlight on them that much greater. I think it's just dumb. Don't know why yeah, they're doing I, it. It's, it's going to be a disaster. Uh, there's already too much stuff like that in the game that – Nobody knows, you know, nobody knows how much contact downfield is, is yeah. admissible uh, on a, for a pass receiver and a defender. You see guys, you know, do things that in one game it's pass interference and in another game, it's just two guys, you know, playing football. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's, it's, and, the and less, it's subjective anyway. I, you know? I hate to be a conspiracy guy, but I'm going to put on the tin foil hat right here. I mean, gambling is now so immersed in sports. Um, we've already seen scandals when college basketball, um, uh, there's an yeah. emerging one locally, maybe. Um, it, we've seen it in the past. Um, uh, in, in, you know, Atani in baseball, he's mixed up with some nonsense. I was just going to say that knows. happened last night. Yeah, I know yeah, we're talking baseball yeah. here, but holy moly, that, yeah. that's... And, uh, I was every now and then I, I look at my phone and I say, well, I'm glad I don't cover that team. And yeah, last night it was, I'm, I'm glad, glad I'm not a Dodgers yeah. beat reporter tonight. They're in yeah. Korea. <laughs> yeah. It's going to break. It might as well let it break like, and fall where nobody can what, talk to anybody. What's going on back home now? We're in Korea. What, what the hell? 
<laughs> my my point, my override, how easy would it be to call a 15-yard penalty to shift yes. the moment? I mean, this yes. is just like who yeah. Who advises Roger Goodell when it comes yeah, to that's, this? That's my question. Whose idea is this? Who's going yeah, to stand I don't up think it's Goodell. I, I, think, you know? I think it's the coaches. I think the coaches are worried about injuries. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. You think, think it's coaches. Goodell? I don't no. think. And, and well, do, no. Do you really think Goodell sits there? Or do you think he's getting direction? No, from I, said, I, said, I said who advises Roger Goodell. Yeah, I don't think it's Roger Goodell. I, but some, it's somebody in the league office. Nobody wants this. The players don't right. want it. Coaches don't want it. They might not even pass it next week because the coaches are going to complain so much. Yeah. But they will pass it in May when the coaches aren't there. Um, if so they you have the owners, why would the owners do it? I don't know. Be a good my, thing my, to ask Jeffy Lurie in Orlando. Uh, you know, my when, assumption is always potential legal in indemnification later on you know with with the concussion issue that's the reason for all yeah. the the are they the facing that with do. orthopedic injuries i mean yeah, I, I, don't, I don't i, I don't yeah, think I they are that. yeah i don't think they are and boy at some point we're going to have to come together as a society and say if we want to continue to play professional football we have to all get together and stipulate guess what it's not good for you Right. Uh, if you want to yeah. play this game, but you're going to get paid very well for a short period of time. If you're in, sign the war. If you're out, go do something else. We got to get to that point as a society. Well, I think I'm sort of with you there, but I'm also you don't just become totally callous and say, let's have people kill each other for our enjoyment if they know what they're getting into. <laughs> you know, I it you do what you can to make the game safer. I just don't think this is a reasonable thing to do. Uh, the concussion stuff, they need to do everything they possibly can. Uh, you can't have, you know, 45 year old guys who, who don't know who their children are, you know, and stuff. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a more difficult discussion because yeah. 25 year olds think a heck of a lot differently than you mentioned. Yes. 55 -year -olds. Yeah. This stuff about, they know what they're getting into yeah. with that. I I've talked to a bunch of these guys when you're 25 years old, the idea of being 45 or 50 or 60 is like yeah. flying to the moon. You no, know? I agree I mean, with that, <laughs> but that's cognitive. That to me is a yeah. little bit different. If you're absolutely, ACL, yes. uh, absolutely. If you're, you know, yes. Um, it ain't good torn Achilles, none of that is good. No. Orthopedic, you know, you could be limping around, but that's a little bit different from not being able to find your car keys. Because Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yes. That's why um, this is, is bothering me. All right, the other new rule that they're contemplating, and it isn't near done, but seems to be leaning that way, is a new kickoff rule that they'll mm -hmm. adopt from the XFL, which I completely, I don't completely understand. I've read it. I, you oh, let me start with this question. Watch a lot of XFL this past year, uh, Les? Did you? <laughs> no, did I? Good. They, they did uh, John or I. So I've only seen highlights or whatever they want to cut up and show me to try and make a point. Um, it, it sounds like they're trying to bring the kickoff back, but it's going to be more like a short field kickoff that they'll start within 10 yards of each other, and only yeah. the guy who's receiving it and the kicker will be deep on the two ends, and then everybody else is going to meet in the middle. It sounds interesting, but I don't know how exciting it's going to be. But as best I can grasp it, Les, it's going to be an added importance on both the kicker and the return guy. Because yeah. the kicker is not going to want to kick the ball out of the back of the end zone. You're going to be right. given a chance to have your defense actually make a play and keep them short of the 35-yard line. And the receiver, there's no more fair catches. You have to either make a play on the ball and bring it out of the end zone or pray that the ball bounces out of the end zone. Because if you don't decide to play it, you're just going to let it bounce because you can't fair catch. You only can get a yeah. touchback. It's intriguing to me how much added value is there going to be on the kicker, not for his massive leg to be able to kick it through the uprights and, and impress people, yeah. but drop it down somewhere is to make it difficult to play. And will there be a new added influence by a kick returner? Because the way I'm seeing this happen, I think that could become an important position for somebody. Will 
kick returning and the specialty of being a good kick returner return to the game? You know, I have to confess, I haven't looked at this at all. I understand what you're saying, and I I agree with you. Uh, it's going to be a big change, and uh, I hope they've really, you know, gamed it out and they understand all the things that are going to happen that you don't anticipate happening. <laughs> um, if the ball hits some other guy or something, I don't know. But uh, – uh, I don't know that they have to do anything. I mean, most kickoffs now go out of the end zone. It's kind of a dead Yeah, they're going to try and change that. That that will not <clears> be I, the case no. going but forward. That, it's not always the case, and strategically, teams don't always do that. You know, um, I don't know. I, I think it, it's interesting. I don't really have an opinion on it yet. I, sadly, I, sadly, I did watch a little XFL yeah. football. It is – better than what the nfl does i will okay. say that um right. they're trying to limit those high speed collisions so basically what they're doing is the coverage guys and the blockers yeah. line up really close to each other um yeah. and they can't move until the returner catches the football uh so in theory <clears throat> you limit those high speed collisions and it and it brings to kick all back in the game and the fact that <clears throat> I think it would be more susceptible for having a punt returner like returner than a, the old school kickoff returner. Cause I don't think long speed yeah. is going to be, right. as it's important. going to be niftiness. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's better um, than what the NFL does, which is basically just start, you know, you might as well ban it and just start and at least yeah. until late in the season where there would be maybe some bad weather games and you couldn't get it out of the end zone. So I applaud them for that one for at least trying because last at one time, the kickoff return was one of the most exciting plays in an NFL game. That is the, true. That Chip is Kelly true. lost a game because he wouldn't kick the ball to Cordero Patterson, who yeah. I would say is the best kick returner I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, he wouldn't kick it to him. The Eagles lost the game because they just kept giving up field goal uh, field position. Yeah, um, I remember. Yeah, it 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 was very impactful, and they completely took it out of the game. So, I guess yeah. I like the fact that they're trying to figure out a way. And it's very unlike the NFL to admit another league had a better idea, and they did. Yeah. That's a good point, John. That's a very good point. My main problem with both punt and kickoff plays is when you have a return uh, in either situation, you know there's going to be a flag. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it's true, almost so. automatic. In yeah. fact, almost every punt play, whether there's a return or not, somebody manages to do something. We were talking a minute ago about the all the different rules. Somebody yeah. manages to do something that was against the rules. Uh, and I'll, so I'll, need- I'll give you, I'll give you very good speculation on why that's the case. Less practice. The yeah. NFL collectively bargained away practice <laughs> time and ever, coaches love to say, and we work on all three phases of the game. You work on special teams for 20 minutes. Come on. Let, let's not get ourselves. You only got so much time. You're going to be working from the line of scrimmage. The guys just don't get enough practice in, so all they have to yeah. do is make a procedural mistake. Boom, out comes the flag. Why would you make a procedural? Because you didn't put any time in practice in it. That's why you see flags on every single punt this uh, past season in the NFL. Nobody practices special teams anymore. Yeah. Good point. Yes. You know, Jody brought up Zach Bond. We haven't talked a lot about Zach Bond, who was one of the <laughs> Eagles' signings in free agency. Um you know, spun as a good special teams player. And I think Jody asked me the question, could he be the next Ike Reese? And I said, no. And I don't know anything about Zach Bond, but I said no because special teams is not as impactful right. as it was when. But it Z- might when, be if they instituted yeah, this new kickoff. That's my point. So maybe, point. maybe the. Also, Eagles does he have a good radio head. voice? That would be. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, but maybe it is going to maybe it is going to become more important, and the Eagles yeah. are trying to get ahead of the curve. So could be, could yeah. be. 
And will Zach Bond be the afternoon drive host on WIP in 2040? You never know. We're going to have to wait know. and see how that one plays and out. And fend right. off A.J. Brown trade rumors. Uh, <laughs> poor Ike Reese. A.J. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, hey, hey, we haven't brought up A.J. Brown in weeks. What do you think yeah. he's doing himself right now, guys? AJ getting ready for the season. AJ enjoying life. AJ second guessing anybody. AJ's what working AJ out. Doing? I just saw. I just saw Biddy's down in Florida. Um, yeah, AJ doesn't look like AJ because he doesn't work at it. Um, yeah, he's yeah. he's chiseled. He's yeah, yeah he's quite. Yeah, a he's specimen. already working out. Um, yeah. So, and he remember he had the knee injury to end the season. But since I brought up AJ, I guess we'll talk about AJ. Um. You know, I think it's funny because WIP did what they always do. Nothing wrong with it. They throw out a flippant poll um, yeah. and say, would you trade A.J. Brown? I don't know exactly what it was. Jody, you might know better. Something about yeah, trading A.J. Brown. Brown for uh, the Denver cornerback. So yeah, uh, okay. Would you AJ trade Brown, A.J. Brown for Patrick? So and I'm sure they didn't look at the the cap ramifications. Right. I'm sure it was some intern and there's just right. no way that you could trade AJ Brown pre June 1st. And I had brought up at the time that's important because if you want to trade somebody like AJ Brown, you don't want to wait for draft capital next year. You want it in right. April. Um, and you certainly don't want to lose a bunch of cap space. Now, they can do it post-June 1st and actually gain some cap space. Um, now, again, he's a big-budget player. why would player. they trade A.J. Brown? Well, right. their best football yeah. player. He's a big-budget player. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Um, so maybe m most teams budget by that point, and they don't have room for a $25 million player. As you know, Les, they budget for free agency in the draft, and then they're ready to go. So you're not going to add a $25 million player usually. But there seems to be some kind of self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy to this. Um, Kay Adams brought it up on her show with AJ, and AJ's like, what are you talking about? Making it out to be like it's a real rumor, and then AJ himself calls up WIP and says, I don't want to be traded, but it is a business. And all of a sudden, little birdie tells me, guess who called the Eagles? The New England Patriots, who've been looking for a desperate receiver. They tried to get Calvin Ridley, um, and they were going to go very high to try to get Calvin Ridley. They're probably going to get a new quarterback. You'd want to get a big time piece next to a new quarterback in theory. Um, they might be a team that calls post June 1st and says, what's going on? What do you think? What, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe. No, I see you shaking what your head. What do they have that you would get? Right. Post June 1st you that would make this draft capital next year. Draft capital. Are you going to play this season or just sort of sit it out? Yeah. Well, that's the point. That's the uh, point. you know, is Jalen Hurts going to get younger, uh, or you know, are all these other players? Okay, here's I'm going to throw a, I'm going to throw, year I'm, of, I'm uh, going to throw a couple extra curveballs. In the coming weeks, I don't know when, but the coming weeks, Justin Jefferson and maybe Jamar Chase are going to reset the wide receiver market. And the old adage, uh, "Rising tide lifts all boats." That means Devontae Smith's going to get more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, all of this factors into it. You know, it's not about just immediacy with Howie Roseman. He knows at some point he's got to extend Devontae Smith. You probably can't pay Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown at the level they are. By the way, when A.J. sees what Justin Jefferson's going to get, he's going to want more money. I, I, am I completely crazy? For for bringing, I evidently you both think I am, but yeah, I don't think you're right. completely crazy. But I, if I'm a GM, I don't try to outsmart myself, and this smacks to me of trying to outsmart yourself. You know, you've got a great player; he's always oh, the best player on the team. Big the part of what you do. There's no compelling need to mess with that. <laughs> there I, really isn't. Yeah, there was a lot of. Sturm and Drang last year, as there always is. Somebody pointed this out last night when they, there was a, uh, a report about the, or a speculation about the Hertz-Siriani relationship. When 
things happen like the second half of last season. Everybody's, Nobody's happy with anybody. Yeah, Nobody likes anybody. So, you know, yeah. it, there's nothing going on with AJ Brown that makes me even consider, unless the Patriots want to trade uh, for the yeah you know, that their pick this year. Uh, you know, uh, I no. There's just I don't. You don't need to go there. There's plenty of other things you can do that you're, you're looking too far into the future. In that, the looking glass there. That lends it quite well to the final question we have for you today, Les. Kenny Pickett or Justin Fields? Both well, were traded within hours yes. of each other. Eagles got one. Yes, the yes. Bears sent uh, Justin Fields to Pittsburgh. Uh, assuming that the Eagles at least inquired about Justin Fields, don't know how interested yeah. they were, what kind of offer they made, but we know what they gave up for pick and we know what Fields went with. Looking at those two players, pick one of the two, either say Eagles were right to make the deal for Pickett or the Eagles are wrong. They should have been more attentive to Justin Fields and give us the main reason, main reason. There's six reasons Absolutely. on both sides, but the main yes. reason why you would pick, pick it over fields and fields over pick it. Well, there's a very good piece about this on lesbowensjohn.com. Nice. Uh, at the moment. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have a problem. Uh, initially, I made fun of the acquisition of Kenny Pickett. Small hands. Uh, <laughs> because he really didn't have much of a year in Pittsburgh and the picture that was being painted of him in the Pittsburgh media was of this delusional guy who didn't want to dress for the final game and doesn't want to compete with Russell Wilson. And I was, you know, at first glance, you look at that and think, how's he going to like backing up Jalen Hurts? But there's a lot more to the story as I've looked into it. Uh, the Fields thing, it's apples and oranges. Fields is a much better athlete. He's not a better passer. Uh, you can look up all the advanced metrics you want. Uh, Pickett grades out better uh, as a passer than than Justin Fields does. Um, and crucially, what I've been able to satisfy myself it, with is Pickett wants to be here in this role. He understands that he, you know, what happened last year was a disaster for him. Nobody wanted him as their starter this year. He can come here, learn under Kellen Moore. I think he's probably secretly got his fingers crossed that Jalen Hurts gets injured and Kenny Pickett gets a chance to throw the ball to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, which he didn't have in Pittsburgh. And suddenly he's a big deal again. You know, Justin Fields – has no reason, you know, a lot of people a month ago were, were still arguing that Justin Fields was an ascending young franchise quarterback in the NFL and that the Bears should do something other than draft a quarterback this year. Yeah, especially um, Bears fans. Bears fans yeah. love him. And Justin why. Fields doesn't want to come somewhere and be a backup for a year. Um, he'll compete and maybe win the job in Pittsburgh. Uh, Russell Wilson is 34 and has bounced around a little bit here lately. Um, we don't know, you know, the, the bears, there was a lot of agent spin that the bears had turned down much better offers. I always take that with a grain of salt because yeah, it was really a much better Please. offer than you screwed yourself and your fan right. base. Uh, I don't, I don't buy that Brian Paul. You know, I, I, I heard by that trading him to Pittsburgh where he wanted to go. Yeah. Les, that's, that's malarkey. You guys yeah. might remember Larry Brown. Remember Larry Hughes, uh, yeah. the, the old Sixer. Larry oh, yeah, Brown yeah, yeah. evidently promised Larry Hughes and his family that the Sixers were going to talk, were going to take him in the draft. And ultimately, they did. But the problem was Paul Pierce dropped out yeah, of nowhere. Paul Pierce, right. Yeah. And uh, the, the Sixers should have drafted Paul Pierce. And Larry Brown was true to his word <laughs> and said, well, I promise this kid. Um, yeah. So it's happened. But very that's the only right. time I can think of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I think Pittsburgh is a better situation for Justin Fields in, in terms of starting this season, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Uh, but, and but, I think see, I don't know that that Chicago wanted to trade him to the Eagles. I I just think you know Pickett 
it, the difference between them is not as immense as some fans. No, plus you're, you know what else? Less you're getting an extra year cost. Yes, you get that's a big years. part. Here's, of this, here's, here's where here's yeah. where I'm throwing a flag on both you guys, specifically you, Bowen, because you just said about AJ Brown. Why would you trade your best player? Which I agree with. Why would you take a lesser player? Kenny Pickett is a lesser player than Justin Fields. The one extra year of cost-effective yeah. backup quarterback. I'm sorry. I rank give me the better player over an extra year of cheap backup quarterback. It just uh, lays over it. It's more important. And the Eagles missed out on an opportunity. Yeah, but one, I I, I, I'm going to defend. The flat out best player, better player. There's a, big difference. There's a big difference between A.J. Brown's superstar and Kenny Pickett, just the better of two backup quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's a little different of a great. And frankly, if you look back, I went back and looked at the stats from Pickett's rookie year, not this last disastrous year where he was playing with an ankle injury and eventually had to have tightrope surgery and apparently tried to rush his return so he could get back in the lineup. And then they said, no, thanks. You know, um, the, the rookie year, he did some really good things. You know, he wasn't everything you'd want in a franchise quarterback, but he he showed a lot of promise that rookie year. He did some very nice things. He had some ratings that were, uh, you know, under pressure, uh, you know, his ability to make plays out of sequence. Uh, you know, he just because last year was a disaster doesn't mean he has no talent whatsoever. And you're looking at a backup quarterback. You're looking at fit with a backup. You're not looking at, who has the most talent always you're looking at fit and how someone will respond to a situation. And, you know, I, I just think, you know, Pickett's who's, probably a better, better fit. going to be in Jalen Hurts? If you're worried about fit, like they were this year where they signed Mariota, that didn't really work. But if you're worried about that, you're of course going to take fields over Pickett because it's more of a pocket quarterback. Uh, fields is more of a Jalen makes something up on the run kind of quarterback. If you're looking at fit, then it's no question it's fields. I well, I, I think Les is talking about fit not in the scheme, fit in in your place on the team. I think yeah. that's what he's talking and about. And in your him. your quarterback room and in your, you know, the fan base and all that stuff. You know, I, I think I think fields would be fields would be very, very much like drafting Jalen Hurts when Carson Wentz just signed a big contract. You know, I, I just now don't. We're worried about Jalen. I don't need to do that. I don't, no, I don't see what the big problem was with Mariota as a backup last year. Did you know, I brought up. We, we did had you Grant, lose any games because Marcus no. Mariota was your backup last year? Because he didn't play. Yeah. He didn't have yeah. the chance to lose any games. We got to let Les go. But I got a story. I, I was talking to Grant Paulson about RG3 and Kirk Cousins. And, uh, you know, I always thought that was smart, man. You draft, and people forget RG3 had a great rookie season, but then he, he got did. hurt, yes. and they had Kirk Cousins, and Kirk Cousins is still playing and getting $200 million contracts. And I said, boy, that's smart. Why don't more teams do that? Um, if they need a quarterback, take a couple swings. And Grant brought up, yeah, but it was a disaster behind the scenes. RG3 right. didn't like it. Um and I said, you know what? You're right. It's it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It makes sense in a vacuum, but personalities come into it, bits come into it, guys aren't happy. Yeah. I, a lot of a lot of bit means a lot. Right, but hey, well, then let, let, let's discuss fit for a second. I know we kept last a long time. That's all right. What did Justin Fields do that made you believe? that he'd be an issue in someone else's locker room. Oh, I just think he he very much think, wants to start yeah, this season. I think and I think play. he comes Not that Pittsburgh he's a bad guy. Yeah. With that idea, even Adam Schefter threw that out, I think, yesterday. Right. That he but could end up being Kenny the starter. Did, and, and Kenny Pickett handled himself well in his press conference the other day. Yeah. Did he say at any point, yeah, I'm a backup and I know I'm a backup and I'm no, no, no. But I think he's he knows he needs so why to why would a year. why would why would Fields be any worse than Pickett as far as fit goes in a quarterback room? Well, you just said you know, Fields has a much better resume at this day? moment. Fields has a much better resume at this moment as a starter, and he. By the way, I don't even think that's true. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, yeah, okay. and yeah. a lot of it isn't his fault. I've said because I like Justin Fields coming out of the 
of the me too ohio state college. Yes. yeah yeah. Um, I liked them a lot. I think Chicago ruined them. I, I, yeah. I, I'm very up. I mean, that happens. I, I saw it with David yeah. Carr. I mean, David Carr, David Carr is, is a punchline now and people make fun of Houston. He's a very talented player who got sacked. I don't know, yeah. 75 times yeah. and became so skittish, um, Teams and and Fitz ruined quarterbacks, and I think oh, yeah. the Chicago Bears ruined Justin Fields. I firmly believe that, and that's why I'd rather have Kenny Pickett because I think Justin Fields at this point is probably unsalvageable because they ruined him to such a degree. That's an interesting point, but I I do think uh, Fields very much is vying to be a, a, a starting quarterback this season. I think Pickett pretty much understands that unless – that this is a good situation for him to sort of rebuild his uh, – he thinks the Eagles are going to be a good team. He's hoping he gets a few starts in there to show that he's he's really a quarterback, and, you know, he resets after that, I think. So Fields is unsalvageable after the mess that went Chicago, but Kenny Pickett, he'll bounce right back after spending a year with Matt Cannon. I'll tell you what, I think people people don't realize, people do not realize Kenny Pickett managed to win games in Pittsburgh. He did. He managed to win games. With an offensive coordinator who got fired in the middle of the season and, you know, all that stuff. I, you know. Kenny yeah, Pickett not, should be sending thank you notes to TJ. I'm not his y agent, but I don't think Minka it's the Fitz, worst Patrick, thing in the world. I really Mike don't. Tomlin, uh, Ken, the, the Pittsburgh yeah. won games. I, I, look, they did, they, did, they did win games with their defense and their running game, but as a quarterback, you can lose games. Even if those guys get you in a position, you can make big mistakes to lose games. That's what Justin Fields did in Chicago. He just lost and lost and that lost was the and Mark lost Sanchez and lost experience. and kept losing. All right, so let, and I know we've kept left way over. Last one less. Here's the deal. You're Howie Roseman, okay? Mm-hmm. Put a uh, number of years left. One year fit. Backup quarterback, Philadelphia Eagles. Put the extra year aside. You've got your choice. Same cost. Justin Fields or Kenny Pickett for the Philadelphia Eagles next year. You taking Kenny Pickett because of fit? Because you think he's going to be a better fit in the, the the quarterback room? Or are you taking a better player? Is Does Fields want to be here for that situation? I mean, Fields that is be- Fields. Fields' is attitude is Fields' is attitude. Pickett's attitude is Pickett's attitude. At that position, I don't think you can do that. I, I think a quarterback, if you're going to get a quarterback, he has to be somebody who wants to be your guy. You know, I just don't think you do it that way. I, it's not like a kick returner or something. You know, I, I just think you don't want a quarterback who doesn't want to be on your team. Um, yeah, you and I see it differently. Okay. It's always a pleasure, buddy. We appreciate you jumping on. Thanks for jumping yeah. on twice. Thanks. Sorry we kept you so late, but you're too That's engaging. All right. I'm not doing less. anything. At Les Bowen, <laughs> X, Twitter. Less- we prop we promise not to call for at least two weeks. We love oh, having you on the show. So we're gonna keep calling, but we'll give you at least a two week break, big guy. Okay. Call anytime. Thanks, Les. Les. Appreciate Les Bowen. It. Les Bowen Jones is a website where he said he just had an article that he put up about Kenny Pickett. He's more of a Pickett guy like Johnny Mac. I'm on in. Kenny Pickett's fine. Fine signing. Fine By the move. way, I don't have Except any problem. There was a better one to be made, and Justin Fields is out there in the Eagles' past. I don't have any it. problem with your thought process. You think Justin Fields is a better player? I, yeah, I don't. A- I think he, I think Chicago ruined him. I, I'm very honest about that. I think they ruined him as a player and a prospect. And it's did a he shame. not play better in the last four or five games of the year? Oh, did you that, not see him trending up over the course of the season, John? Look, he's always been a phenomenal athlete. He's always been able to make plays something out of nothing, and that won't leave him. But his no, the processing and and I saw him live, and I I, I made the joke, and it was probably too cruel. He processes with a sundial. Forget about a clock. I mean, it just takes him forever. He doesn't trust what he sees, and he doesn't trust what he sees because he's gotten terrible coaching, and he was in a terrible situation. Um, can somebody rescue him? Perhaps I'm not saying it's impossible, but looking at other high level quarterbacks who've been in similar situations, they usually don't turn it around. 
Uh, um, we're we're looking at picket against Fields. What some other high level court actor didn't do was uh, kind of irrelevant to me, but uh, he did win four of his last six games last year. So your continued argument is, well, the bad quarterbacks can find ways to lose games for you. He won four of his last six why last year. He's absolutely it, trending. In why the right is it? Why is a six game sample size better than a twenty four game sample size? Or even that's Pickett's, or even 38, which is Fields. And the 38 game sample size with Fields is pretty stinking ugly. I I get that. I and I'm making my argument on the most recent direction. Kenny Field, Kenny Pickett going backwards, Justin Fields playing better and improving. I take the improving player, plain and simple. Pretty, pretty easy from my evaluative standpoint. All right, quick timeout, come back. Still got plenty to go here on Birds 365, but not until I tell you guys about an outstanding chance for you to save some really good money on your car insurance. Birds fans, here's your chance to save up to 40%. That's a pretty good savings on your car insurance. Do it right now with one of Jacob Sports' great partners. Here's what you need to do. Call managing partner Jim or Fran and tell them you're a friend of both Jacob Sports and Birds 365. Hi, I'm Jim Muehlbronner, managing partner at DelVal Insurance Group. Give us a call. We're a local, knowledgeable agency, not an 800 number. Go Birds! Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. 
Eagles. Hopefully you got the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365 because we're doing producing right here on the air. I've lost my feed. I'm assuming on the air. Johnny Mac, you see me right now? I do see you. Are you seeing Bob Groats right now? I I do see Bob Groats. I see both of you. What do you got? A black screen? Yeah, it's kind of why. I've done that before. Usually it's a plug that comes undone and you can still hear. Yeah. John and I can still hear you. (laughs) (laughs) Groats would write me off in a millisecond. That's why. Uh, Not not true. Yeah. Next man up. Bob Groats lets you and I debate Kenny Field, uh, Kenny Pickett, and Justin Fields, unless, of course, you wisely believe that the Eagles should have looked into acquiring Fields instead of Kenny Pickett. Yeah, you like, I like Fields? Fields. I like Fields, no question. Uh, I I understand though. There there's some um, there's some fifth year option questions. Yeah. There, you know, and and who knows? I mean, I don't, but I don't, I don't expect uh, Justin Fields would have played much anyway. But who knows? I, and you never know with injuries. Who knows? Hurts could get hurt, and um, and then maybe you have to go in that direction. Um, it would have been interesting, but you know the Eagles. I'm sure they explored that because they were they were interested in him. Yeah, Kenny they Pickett, called. Yeah. They called about they 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 had some not a lot, but they had some cursory interest when he was coming out. Uh, Justin Fields, um, very talented kid. Well, here's how I'll frame it, Bob. If it, it, God forbid Jalen Hurt does get hurt, um, do the Eagles? have a better chance to win with Justin Fields or Kenny Pickett. And the second part of that is, do they want, does it indicate going with Kenny Pickett indicate they want Jalen Hurts to change a little bit, to evolve a little bit, to be become a different style of quarterback. And I bring that up because Saquon Barkley's here as well. In other words, do they want to scale back and say, let's run the football a little bit more. Let's play action a little bit more. So we always talk about fit, and in theory, Fields looks like a similar scheme fit to Hurts more than Pickett, but maybe Kellen Moore wants to change that a little bit. Too much? What, that question? Yeah, can you repeat that? Yeah, I can't repeat that. No, okay. You know, I thought for a second when you said they, Kenny Pickett, because they want to be more of a pocket team. Well, he threw a lot. He threw a ton of interceptions, right? Kenny Pickett, so... So I hope Jalen Hurts doesn't pick that up by, you know, watching him. No, I don't mean because of Penny Pickett. I'm saying is Kellen Moore part of this and the fact that the offense is going to change a little bit? Oh, yeah. The offense is is obviously going to change. We're not how it always changes with a new coordinator. Um, But, um, you know, the answer to your question, though, A, um, Justin Fields, in my opinion, definitely gives them a better chance to win games. And and people say, well, look at his record in Chicago. He had nothing around him in Chicago. I mean, almost true. <laughs> literally nothing, you know? And uh, so he had to win games by himself, and, and it was impossible. I don't, I don't know that anybody could have won in those circumstances. Did he develop as a passer? No, and that, and that hurt him too. So, but <clears throat> definitely the, the Eagles could win more games with him. Um, does this speak to the evolution of uh, – you know, to, to an evolution to a Kellen Moore offense, I guess you could, I guess you could say that, but, uh, but seriously now, um, you know, I, I don't think that, um, I, I think Kellen Moore is going to have to change a little bit with uh, the way, you know, to adjust to more to, to uh, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is the guy with a big contract. He, he better shape the offense around his, his skills and, uh, and, and not, not so much keep them happy, but, but shape it around his skills and what he does best to make this thing work. And by the way, um, the more I look at that Saquon Barkley thing, the more I'm starting to come around a little bit because you remember their Super Bowl season. They got that big back from uh, New England. Garrett Blunt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, there's there's something to be said for a power back like Barkley is. And, uh, you know, initially I thought, you know, I don't, I don't get this. I don't understand it. But if, if he stays healthy – he could be the he could be that guy. He could be. That, By the way, <laughs> why does everybody bring up Bloods when it was Jay Ajahi down the stretch of the Super Bowl? Uh, he owned, Jay Ajahi. 
because he only got three or four carries a game. No, no, yeah. Jay. No, you. No, he didn't. Mis- he didn't get more. You're than misremembering. Ten- Jay was no. the bigger deal down the You're stretch. You're gonna have to prove to me that he got more than oh. ten a game. Yeah, Jay. Jay was good down the stretch, but his season. knee was done. I mean, oh yeah. Well, that's the second Doug time. Peterson told us he couldn't practice. You know, there. Well, that was when he came back. Game. He left to go to Miami, and then he came back, and Doug said, "Yeah, he's got nothing left." <laughs> but but quiet privately, he he was saying that oh, before. No. Jai even left John. He, I mean, he was saying that. So, and uh, and it was a struggle just to get him ready for game day. Uh, did he produce it with those uh, touches? Yeah, but he didn't get that many touches. And uh, I Blunt really gave him a presence, even in the Super Bowl. You know, some hard. Didn't he score a touchdown in the Super Bowl? Um, I think he did. Yeah. Um, I, I have to think it. Jai all running, running together. But, yeah, but I kind of. You know what? I'm not one of those. I'm not a guy that says, well, if you look back at that, his, I mean, I'm doing it today, but I, I really think there's something to be said for that. Uh, Jay, and, uh, Jay was here for seven games at the end of the regular season, uh, had 70 touches. So 10 a game. That's pretty good. 10 a well, game. That, but he had, he had like about 14 or something like that early in a couple of games. And then that was it. But he did. He, he helped him. There was, there was average no five point eight yards yeah. a carry. By the That's way, pretty good. Was, yeah. yeah, no question. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, free agency. Uh, we're through wave one. In the midst of wave two, seemed to me like yesterday the Eagles signed a wave three player, so they kind of jumped ahead. But there's one guy left out there who I would consider a wave one free agent, talent wise. And all I keep seeing are articles where the Eagles have. Uh, in the top 10 of cap space at this time, which we understand is a fluid situation. You sign a guy, your spot on the cap space uh, list changes because you got to pay somebody uh, a new new amount. Justin Simmons, is that still a possibility for the Philadelphia Eagles? He hasn't signed with anybody. A Pro Bowl player, 30 years old. The old argument of you don't want to pay a guy once he's 30, but... I still think he's as good a safety out there that is left. The Eagles still need uh, depth in their secondary. Do you think Vic Fangio says to Howie Roseman, I know this kid. I know what I can get out of this kid. Let's bring him in here. Let's pay him what we need to get his name on an Eagle contract. Oh, yeah. He definitely, that familiarity would definitely help. Um, Maybe he doesn't think he's got that much left. I don't know. I mean, to... But he, you know, give him a long term contract. Maybe, maybe Simmons thinks that, uh, which is, I, I think, is the more likely scenario. Sim- Simmons thinks that he'll, he'll still be able to get like a multi year contract or, or some bi- a bigger deal with somebody else. But, uh, yeah, I would not discount him coming to the Eagles. Um, you know, un- unless we learn that Vic Fangio doesn't think he's got much left, but uh, he's intercepted a lot of passes and, um, uh, he, he makes some plays and he lines people up. He's Kevin Byard, only he can still run. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the highlights, yeah, that, that was a shame with Kevin Byard. Too. Yeah. Wow. Well, he he yeah. really, he knew the game, but he just, there was nothing left. Those he got, the, he got multiple years from those Chicago bears. So they're still making good decisions. Just no legs left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Devin White. I'm going back and forth on Devin White, Bob. I, yeah. I hated the move at first. Now I met the guy and I said, you know what? Maybe take a swing at it. I'm not saying it's great by any stretch. Yeah, but, inconsistency. And, um, yeah. and, and you know, he lost his starting job last year to some unheralded, you know, I, I can't even remember his yeah, name. Yeah, it's a fifth round pick. Um, yeah. He yeah, lost but, it, but I did not know he he he, he hurt himself focus. in week three, so he's playing through an injury. Yeah, um, I I kind of think when that kind of stuff happens, though, I mean, um, I think it's more than just the injury because uh, if you're still making plays and doing stuff or, or still playing the defense, I think you're still in there. I I don't know about him. Yeah, I mean, may, he's healthy now, so uh, he can definitely run, and uh, he doesn't have too much miles on him and. Let's put it this way, too. He's definitely he, – you could almost pick names out of a hat and they're going to be better than what the Eagles have right now because they – no, nothing in terms of experience. And, and that's not a that's not a slight on that guy from Georgia, that little guy who, who can't stay healthy. But, I mean, the reality is if you're looking at um, 
at what the Eagles have in their on their roster and in terms of proven commodities, there, there's very little. If Kevin Bayard said he was hurt and the Bears bought into it, and that's why they gave him two years, $14 million, would we cut him the same slack that you're suggesting maybe we should cut Devin White? Oh, he's playing hurt. He was injured. Well, I would say, yeah. A, Devin White didn't get two years. He got one year for $4 million, three and a half guaranteed. So, yeah. I mean, it's much lesser. I'm yeah, not it's... comping the contract. I'm just comping the how much do we really put into a player's statement that he was playing hurt when he played every single week that he didn't. Well, maybe maybe time. that's fair, but I'm saying if the Eagles signed him to a two year deal, I, that's why I think that's why I brought up the contract. If they signed him to a two year, oh, I, I'd be killing him. I'd be killing him if they signed it to. I'm saying after you lose out on some other linebackers and there's nothing left, and you say, all right, let me take a swing at the fences. I'm starting to warm up to that. Not a bad swing at the fences. You're probably going to be Dave Kingman and strike out, but it's worthy. And if you hit the home run, maybe, maybe, maybe something special can happen, like LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to, you know, maybe that thing, if they can keep him healthy, <laughs> Saquon Barkley, if he's healthy in December. Oh, you're talking Saquon, yeah. yeah. Well, if, yeah. but, you know, and I'm, and I'm going with the, the Blunt kind of thing, the, the Garrett Blunt thing. If they can keep Saquon healthy into December, I, I mean that that could get really interesting. So um, we'll we'll see what happens. I, I, you know, I'm and you I, you know that I'm not the biggest fan in the world of Kellen Moore. Um, he's had some good years statistically. Um, is he an upgrade over the other guy? Yeah, I mean uh, he, he definitely has experience, but uh, you know he kind of got run run out of. Uh, Los Angeles, right? Or the the, the Chargers? Well, he the had, head coach, he the had head one coach of the best got quarterbacks in the league, and he, yeah. you know, and you know, I, Justin Herbert got hurt. I mean, that that you know, and he played hurt, but uh, and that's that was a problem. And he had that that team was bitten by injuries, but he he just couldn't. I mean, that offense, you know, I don't think anybody liked it. Here's my problem with Devin White, um, and it's kind of like Kenny Pickett. Like I'm saying. I'm not saying Kenny Pickett can't work. He may well work. He might come in, might play well for the Eagles. Jalen's only got to miss a game. Hopefully he doesn't play. Right. If he's got to play five or six games, I think the Eagles are screwed. But if it's only one game, then maybe Kenny Pickett comes in and game manages him to a win. So I'm not killing it. I'm just saying there was a better option. The Eagles should have chosen a better option. They didn't. With Devin White, who would you rather have? Uh, Baker or White on a one-year deal? Would you rather have Drew Tranquil or? Uh, well, he resigned with White. Kansas City. Okay, they probably the, would have. How about the... Willie Gay? <laughs> Willie Gay went one-year deal to the Saints. Which team's got a better chance to be a winner this uh, this year? He's a guy coming from a two-time championship team, and he goes to the Saints on a one-year deal. Why couldn't that be the Eagles? There were better linebackers out there, and I would have taking a couple of guys that you and I have talked about before, the Josie Jules of the world, the Blake Cashmans of the world, oh, yeah, who got multi-year deals. I would have took Cashman. He played great last season for Houston. Um, but, yeah, I think they missed out on some guys. Some guys right. go to different spots, and they probably did have an interest in them, and they were down to what they were down to. And I'm with you. I'd probably still take Baker. Baker was still available. Um but now that I met the guy, I'm not as hard line as I was before. I was pretty hard line before I met the guy. I, you know, his his PFF numbers, Bob, are atrocious. I know you're a big PFF fan. Oh, yeah. they were atrocious, yeah. atrocious. Um, but you know, maybe there is some context to it. That's all I'm saying. Dave Kingman, swing for the fences, baby. I I think you got sucked in by a good uh, uh, media appearance. Maybe, Don't maybe it. I can get sucked in. I'm not like Bob. He's a curmudgeon. Yeah, yeah. I, that's why. That's why we love you, Bob. Yeah, you yeah, don't put anything in that. on how pleasant the By guy the way, is up there on the it, podium, it's what do you? you? Do. It's not what you say. That yeah, exactly. What, what, exactly. I agree. Uh, but you said something interesting about Kellen Moore. I want to dive into because you mentioned he got blown out with the Chargers. I think that had more to do with the head coach, Brandon Staley, who was, you know, coaching for his job. 
essentially a lame duck. Kellen Moore's in the same situation, isn't he? He got one year. If Nick Sirianni doesn't turn this thing around, Nick's out of here. What is Kellen Moore doing going back in this up? Is this a wise move for Kellen Moore? What to, to Philly? Yeah. I mean, he got he's gotten kind of what he wants, right? Didn't don't you think he was the guy who wanted Saquon? I think Howie question. wanted Saquon. I think he was. I think that was the guy he wanted. Yeah. I think and, Howie. Howie's enamored with Saquon. Actually, Howie and you know Pickett. Howie loved Pickett. Oh yeah, I yeah, mean, he did. He came he back did. from that trip to Pittsburgh after the game with between UNC and Pitt. He came back just loving this guy. Everybody in the building knew it, you know. So, I mean, and, and that's a big factor. But uh, you know, but uh, you know, back to your question, Kellen Moore. I don't know. You know, he he's he interviewed. I don't think it should be it should be uh, forgotten that he interviewed for the head coaching job of the Eagles, that the one that Nick Sirianni got. Yeah. Now, if you want to make, you want to make your head coach uncomfortable and you, you tell him, you know, I, I'd like to hire this guy who interviewed for the job that we gave to you. You have any problem with that? <laughs> oh no, no. Yeah. <laughs> High five, babe. Yeah. <laughs> I, Nick, that, Nick awesome. did a lot of that this off season, though. Yeah. Yes, whatever you say, Howie. Whatever you need, Howie. I'll sign off on anything, Howie. Why wouldn't? Why would we be surprised about Kellen Moore? Yeah. That, now that's pretty awkward. Now, now, thank God that Vic Fangio is going to be there because I, I really like this guy. Maybe because I'm old school, but this guy he, and he he just his methods are proven. I mean, I I I had a debate with John about how good his defenses were, but. Uh, I think that this guy is is a, a genius. He's a, he's a contemporary genius in, in putting guys with uh, sometimes with limited skill sets in the right places. He, he, my, really my only problem with Big Bangio is too many people play his defense. And when too many people play your defense, and Jody knows I talk about this all the time, everybody, whether it was Tony Dungy or, or, or Pete Carroll and the Legion of Boom, when everybody starts copying your defense, there's a there's a turning point, there's a tipping point, um, and people figure it out, and it goes in a negative direction. I think that's where we are with big scheme, but maybe he's been smart enough to uh, adjust in the past. Maybe he adjusts. He maybe is. He yeah. dips it. Maybe he's ahead of the curve. He tweaks it. He tweaks it. He's a step ahead. That game plan. He had for the first three quarters against Kansas City in the playoff game last year was brilliant. They had nobody left on that defense. They yeah. had seven or eight starters were out. They were, the yeah, they were, they were and messed they, up. He kept them in that game. I mean, I know it was brutally cold. It wasn't easy to throw the ball, but that defense was terrific. It it gave them a chance. It was the offense really let Kansas City down. And I'm not I'm not sold on that coach. I think he's a cool guy in Miami, that nerd coach. He, yeah, he, he is a cool guy. He is a nerd. I'm You're not right though. Yeah, but that, but Vic, Vic showed it to me there. Some of his blitzes were incredible. Just really for the for the limited time he had these guys, even I was really impressed. I, I think this is a great hire. He's going to be better than Sean Desai and Matt Patricia. I'm very comfortable. Uh, saying no, that. no. Yeah. Well, yeah. Way to go out on a limb there, Johnny Mac. Good job <laughs> out of you. That's another um, one where you could throw the names in a hat. Hey, hey, you you talk to every Eagles fan coming in the last season. Well, Sean Desai's got to be better than Jonathan Gannon. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, 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 no. Vic's no. going to be better uh, than they were last. It, there were foolish Eagle fans who said Matt Patricia's got to be better than Sean Desai. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Uh, evidence the last handful of games. I I want to take you into the trenches, Bob Groats. The Philadelphia Eagles this offseason have lost Jason Kelsey and Sue Opetta and Jack Driscoll. So far, they brought in Matt Hennessy. And I'll be honest, I don't know much about Matt Hennessy other than Temple. Right Temple right Tough. Now. He's yeah. Temple Tough. All right, yeah. Temple Tough, and they're trying to run this on Reddick out of town. Temple Tough doesn't yeah. always get it done. Where did you want to side coach before he was here? Temple yeah. Tough, how'd that work out? <laughs> right, we got to put Temple, we got to put Temple Tough aside here for a couple of minutes. Um, do they just say in Stout we trust? We'll bring in 
three undrafted free agents. Uh, John keeps telling me they might go offensive line in the first round. But yeah. if they do, they're going to yeah. go tackle, and the guy's yeah. going to sit on the damn bench because no, he's he not replacing either Lane Johnson or or uh, Mylotta. No, so if they throw sit. a first-round pick that way, it's sit. not going to make him any better. He won't sit. He'll move inside. They'll get a versatile guy that can play inside or outside mm -hmm. a tackle. They'll play him inside for a year. And uh, and then we'll see what happens with Lane and or or with my lot. He, his uh, his contract I think is coming up soon. So yeah, I I think they definitely draft a guy. And uh, I, I thought a cornerback at first. There's a lot of offensive linemen. I think a, a good one is going to drop to him if they choose to stay there. Even if they don't, they'll get somebody in the second round. And uh, and and, and you know me, I say Dickerson should play center. I mean, there's just yeah. just no doubt in my mind. Put yeah. him at, You're sticking to that, huh? Put, put You're going to die on that hill, Bob Gross. Put Steed, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but put Steed on the right side. You're going to be gasping for more. air on, on Mount Everest because Dickerson you're not going to win that one. A lot more big games at the pivot than, uh, than Cam has. I, well, I think I owe you like four coffees by now, but uh, yeah, we're going to go Enemans Donuts. Cam Jurgens is going to be the week one center. Barring injury. Barring injury. Injuries are always, uh, and if it's not Camp Jurgen, it's going to be Temple Tough Matt Hennessy. That's why he's here, because they don't yeah. want to move Landon Dickerson. I've always felt you could only go as far as Jack Driscoll takes you, and that's going to be a tough <laughs> loss. You know, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, Jack. Uh, it's an uncalled for, but maybe yeah. accurate. Uh, Jack, shot at Jack, Jack Driscoll, but here's my point. That's what I asked. They've signed one lineman. They've lost three. I'm not great at math, but I can do that math. Are we looking at phase three, the, cr the, the, the crumbs at the bottom of the plate that will be their offensive line depth this offseason? There, there could be a stopgap guy or two. Yeah. I mean, it's too bad they don't have 10-day contracts, you know? like Yeah. It, you you but, don't well, know NBA yeah, on us? You know, the I love it. Don't forget Tyler Steen. And don't forget, I think he plays. mean, Tyler Steen's going to be starting right guard. Well, that's what He's I'm saying. Play, play one of those guards, yeah. I'm saying, but guys, step up and don't forget about Fred Johnson. They like Fred Johnson so much that they they tore John up loves. His Jody, I got to tell you, John loves Fred Johnson. I love. Well, he's great. He's, he's the a great biggest dude. guy. Another the another team. one where John's falling prey to because he's a good dude. He's a good dude. He gets quotes in uh, a press conference that makes him a better player than he actually uh, no. is. Well, he's never he's had a press guy on the team. He he's is. He's bigger than my lotta. Locker room when Fred Johnson's walking. He is bigger than Jordan my lotta. He um, is big. He he. They they ripped up his futures deal and gave him a two year contract. Um, which tells you. Something they like, I mean, him. Right. yeah, yeah. And what's what's Fred Johnson's? Is he Mister Plug and Play? You can put him in anywhere. Or no, he's he... he's he's the backup swing tackle. He's six eight. You know. Three. Then why would they use a first round pick on a backup tackle if they've got Fred Johnson? Well, if 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 they take a um a tackle in the first round, yeah, Fred's shit out of luck, as they say, but. uh <laughs> But he's the biggest yeah. guy in the team. Why would Jody they use a first round pick if they got big uh, Fred? Yeah, that's that's SOL. You're SOL if if they take a yeah, nice knowing you, Fred. I like you, but nice knowing you. If they take a, a tackle in the first round. And my whole that my whole thing about a tackle in the first round, there's so many good tackles yeah. that one is probably gonna fall. But if how we, you know first or second day. Yeah. If Howie wants a cornerback, he's going to have to act, and he's going to probably have to trade up. Um, and he's done that in the past. He's done that in recent years. He traded up to get Carter. Yeah. He traded up to get Davis. He traded up to get Devontae. So if he wants Quinion Mitchell. Uh, Washington, right? The guy who was hurt. <laughs> yeah. So you, you think, John, you think more corners will be taken before 22 than Second offensive round. tackles? No, the problem is there's like there's like three corners probably that belong in the 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 top twenty two. The there's about know. there's about eight offensive tackles. So my whole point is th those twenty one teams in front of you, they're not all going to need offensive tackles. They're not all going to want offensive tackles. And a really good player is going to fall to you if you're just sitting there at twenty two. That probably has a higher that should go earlier. The corners. <laughs> If you want a corner, you better act because yeah, 
I get your I get your philosophy here, but but I think there's going to be a run on offensive tackles, really, because I, I and I think there are a lot of teams that could use one. So it, it'll be fun to see what happens. You know, I that makes sense though when you have a, a dearth of uh, depth at one position, p- somebody's got to drop. You know, and plus the quarterbacks, how many quarterbacks are going to be taken? That's yeah. all. I, I think that, quarterbacks that, might go one, two, three, four. I really yeah. believe that. One, two, three, four. JJ McCarthy. Like Good luck with JJ like McCarthy. At the, at the first round pick. Who? Michael Penix? Penix. Maybe late first round. Yeah. But I, Minnesota not... already made the deal to get a second first round pick. They're going up and are probably going up to four to take JJ McCarthy. And it's oh. going to be a disaster, but it they're going to do it. It is. They're going to do it. I wouldn't so do that. If if you go Caleb Williams and then Washington, Daniels or May, and then who's third, Jody? They're going to take the other one. Um, Patriots. Patriots are third. They're going to take the other one. Um, and Minnesota's going to go up to four. Minnesota's going to trade Arizona for J.J. McCarthy. And, oh, by the way, if that happens, shame on the Cardinals because you got a chance to take uh, Marvin Harrison and you're going to yeah. trade out of that spot for two first-round picks, that would be dumb, too. It'd be dumb on dumb if that trade happens. If you're right, Johnny Mac, that would be – you always look for yeah. a win-win in a trade. That would be a loss. Dumb, dumb. loss. Loss, loss. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Can you imagine him with Tyler Murray or Kyler Murray? I mean um, – Marvin's you know, creating a, some – uh, Marvin is creating some issues with NFL teams. He's not doing anything. And And by the way, I love his thought process. He's like – I'm training to play football, not your stupid track games. I love it. I love it. But I don't think NFL teams love it. Remember yeah. Derek that remember Derek Barnett ran like a five nine forty yard dash or something. <laughs> and he said, I'm not training for the track, you know, but he just couldn't stay healthy. Yeah. He I, I, he, I don't think by the way, time. by the yeah. way, Derek Barnett still available. This no, might be no, he uh, went back to Houston one did year. Did he sign when? Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday. I, think, yeah. yesterday. I believe yeah, it was I yesterday. Missed it. Uh, yeah. Just good, good luck yeah. to him. One now. year, one year. He, not he should have because uh, he supposedly played unbelievable for them. The well, he's SOL because they signed uh, Daniel Hunter. So good luck getting that playing time. Derek he'll Barnett. be he'll be sitting behind him exactly right. All right. Uh, last thing, Bob. You kind of hinted at it earlier about Sirianni and Moore and this coaching staff. Uh, with what the Eagles have done in free agency and how we believe is a pretty good salesman and the contracts are going to rue the day almost 95% of the time. But when you get to that extra 5% of, yeah, the deals are the same on both teams, but where would I rather be? What coaching staff would I rather play for? The Eagles with Sirianni and Moore and Fangio is the three biggest guys. You want to put Stoutland in there too because – if you're an offensive lineman, I think you certainly have to be thinking of stout. Um, Eagles as a plus or a minus, if the deal's the same, readily admit oh, salary plus. is going to decide at 95% of the time. But if it's two teams, same deal, is the Eagle coaching staff a plus or a minus right now? It's a plus. It's still a plus, yeah. And and it's a plus. And you, and you have to throw the quarterback in there, too. Even though it's the coaching staff you're talking about, you want to play – for a team with a quarterback that gives you a chance to win. And they still have that. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I, I think people were too harsh on Jalen Hurts last year. Obviously, he took a step back. But I, I don't think he played poorly, um, as a lot of people are trying to stretch. that. Look, nobody played well over the last six games or whatever. But Yeah, but down um, the home, yeah he, he struggled. I, I think mean, overall, he still he had a... a- Headlights, yeah. Yeah, solid season. At Bob Groats, make sure uh, you follow Bob on X and Twitter, DelcoTimes.com. Always a uh, pleasure, guys. Tremendous job. Always a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, yeah. just real quick before you leave, uh, Bob, I did look it up. Yeah, Jay Ajahi was the one getting the carries in the playoffs. 15, 18, and then nine in the Super Bowl. But remember, Jay the Super Ajahi Bowl – 15 carries in one playoff game? 15 carries against Atlanta, 18 against Minnesota when they were blowing them out, so they're trying to close the game. 18 carries touches. Uh, 18 carries uh, and nine against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. But remember, 
Corey Clement had a big Super Bowl. The, it wasn't the Yes. Yeah. Catching. Yeah. 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 That was one of the biggest plays in this. I Super like Bowl. that rotation. I got a question for Jody real quick. Who Who are the outs in the Dodgers lineup? <laughs> Who are the outs? They don't have many of them. A ton, a because he's uh, he's going to get suspended for gambling. Oh, is it? Oh, that's no. right. <laughs> and it's... Eagles got a cornerback, right? Who got? Yeah. Has he been cleared to come back, John Isaiah Rod? No, not yet, not yet. But they signed a corner cornerback yesterday. I already forget his name. Do you All remember right. his name? I, Tyler, 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 Hill. Tyler time, Hall, Tyler oh, Hall. Next Hill. time I'm Hill on, Hall, same thing. Come on. Yeah. Next time I'm on, Jody, I want to know who the outs are in that Dodgers lineup. Um, Teoscar Hernandez. I <sighs> think he was a an off season addition. Oh, Outman, their center fielder, could really play out there. But he he out hit what I thought he was going to do last year. They don't have outs in their lineup. The, the answer to your question is none. How'd you like to be a pitching staff facing them? Yeah. yeah oh. It's not, not easy. All right, guys. Right. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Mr. Thanks, Groth, Bob. thank you very much. Feel he down. is, for someone of a certain age, he is still cool. He's got the setup in the car. He's got the members-only vest on. You got to give it to Groth. He is, he is always trending up. Uh, so to speak. All right, we're trending out. Gonna take a quickie timeout. Come back, put a bow on the show here on Bird Street 65. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian. In my heart, I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC (laughs) Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. All right, Johnny Mac, we got a couple minutes left here. And I mentioned this earlier because I saw it in two or three different places over the last two or three days. Ooh, Eagles with the eighth most cap space as of right now, which 
means the minute that you write the article. 20 minutes later, someone could get signed and you a team could either move above you or behind you on overall cap space. So those are very momentary things when you look at stuff like that. And the reason why I can't get signed about the Eagles is, Johnny Mac, do you have your Eagle contract folder open? Uh, no, but I can. Right okay. now, over the caps, got them with the fifth most cap space. Yeah. Fifth most cap space. Um, what do they have for uh, Brandon Graham and his contract salary this upcoming season? Oh, let me let me see. Let me pull up the Eagles. Um, do, 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 Brandon. Um, they have. Um, yeah, they. It looks like they still have his old deal up. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, what what exactly is CJGJ going to get paid this year? Um. Yeah, he's not even up yet. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a certainly a top fifty one player. That they haven't put the details in yet. Devin White. Um. What's his salary going to look uh, like? This? Devin White. Uh. Not in there yet. No, okay. Uh. And uh, Oren Brooks. They served yesterday. I think he's going to be. He's going to be the bottom end of the top fifty one. But yeah. I can guarantee you his contract details yeah. aren't in there yet. So that's my point. There's a bunch of guys that haven't been added yet. So, ooh, the Eagles have the fifth most salary cap space. Until you put Devin White in, until you put CJ EJJ, until you put Brandon Graham in. They got a bunch of contracts that haven't been reported yet. So we don't know if they're fifth or not overall with cap space. They could be 18th with cap space when you put those other guys in. They do have Saquon Barkley in, and that's a positive. Saquon's numbers have come out, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, by the way, on Saquon, three, four void years. So, yeah. Four. Typical, typical Eagles. Four after um, three. He's got a three-year contract. After and three, year void and then after. four void years. Uh, his cap number this year is only 3.8. So, you know, uh, that's how the Eagles and do that's it. the way they do business. And yep. there's an upside to it. There's a downside to it. Gives you a lot more flexibility in the moment. But at some point, the bill is going to come due, and you're going to have to pay it. You're going to have dead cap money down the road. But that's the way they do it, so be it. Uh, and uh, we mentioned Matt Hennessy earlier, which John said he's going to be the starting center if um, something should happen to their, their starting center. Well, the and, week and by the way, I, 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 and you know, if Cam Jurgens gets hurt, I think that's the reason he's here because they don't want um, to move Landon Dickerson, unfortunately for Bob. Um, now you got to worry about Matt Hennessy being healthy. I mean, that's been a, he's a starting player in Atlanta. He's a former third round pick. He was a starter and he, he just hurt his knee and he hurt his knee again. And he hasn't played essentially in two years. Um, but he was, he started last year as the starter at left guard that he started at center and then he was going to be the starter at left guard and he got hurt and he got hurt. I mean. And oh, he's got is, some talent. He's got some talent is what I'm trying to say. What is what is Matt Hennessy's contract look like for this upcoming year? Per over the cap? See, he's in there. Uh he's getting uh one uh one his his cap number is one point seven five. So you know. Okay. Decent That's, deal. If it's Decent. under two million, it's not bad, but for a backup player who could be a starter if there are injuries. All right, brother, good show today. I appreciate uh, you allowing me to come back and play with you today after I missed out yesterday. Um, Tomorrow we'll get our our buddy Damo up and the voice of the Eagles en Espanol. Ricky Ricardo is going to jump in with us. So we got uh, Ricky and Damo for tomorrow. Um, Good show today, brother. You in for tomorrow? I'm coming. I promise. I missed one. I already apologize. I'm not going to apologize again. Yeah, by the Um, way, we had a discussion on what the official YouTube uh, uh, um, numbers and how many shows we've done with Joe Krause. I think think our numbers are off, uh, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Because YouTube has us archived for... 738 episodes. Yeah, I got 720. What's today's date? The 22nd? March 21st. March 21st. So that's 728. How would you say? 738. Yeah. 738 archived as of right now. So today would be 739. Now, J- Krause intimated that maybe Jody wasn't counting 
the rare days you weren't here, and maybe that might be the difference. Put them up on the on my calendar, uh, whether I'm here or not. I counted yesterday's when I wasn't here. So that's not the explanation. Yeah, but YouTube has 738 Birds 365 episodes. So if you want to check them out, all 738 in a row. If you got a lot of time on your hands, they're there for you. <laughs> we'll come back tomorrow and give you a live edition of Birds 365 in two and two. You've been listening to Birds 365. <laughs> The destination for the passionate Eagles football fan who bleeds green. If it's Eagles football, we're talking about it. Debate inside the locker room and guests that are some of the greatest football minds from around the region. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on social media at Jacob Sports. See you next time on Birds 365.